that will share in the formation of the hands. Those are the carpal bones, metacarpal bones, and the phalanges or the fingers. For the carpal bones, if you remember, those were scaphoid, lunate, triquetral, and PZ4. Next is going to be, next row is going to be the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hemi. For the metacarpal bones, we don't give them names, but we give them numbers. So we start again from the lateral side, as what we did with the carpal bones. Start from the thumb. So the metacarpal bone of the thumb, it's going to be my first metacarpal bone. Next is going to be second, third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal bone. So we don't give them names, we give them numbers. Starting from the thumb being the first metacarpal bone. For the phalanges, we don't give them numbers or names. We're going to be calling the phalanx that is located closer to the metacarpal bone. It's the proximal phalanx proximal phalanx, and the ones located away from the metacarpal bone, those are my distal phalanges. For the medial four fingers, we've got the middle phalanges, middle phalanges. So medial four fingers gonna have proximal, middle, and distal. The thumb only gonna have a proximal and a distal phalanx. It doesn't have a mid middle phalanx. All right, so moving on to the pelvic girdle. If you see on here, the pelvic girdle is going to be formed by the coxal bones, which are formed of three fused bones. Here is the right and left coxal bones. And those coxal bones are attached to one another anteriorly by fibrous cartilage, fibro cartilage. And we're going to call this joint that gets formed here between the two. coxal bones or the two hip bones. This is my symphysis pubis or my pubic symphysis. If you notice on here, below the pubis, below the symphysis pubis, we've got an arch. So we call this is my pubic arch. Pubic arch is going to be formed by the two coxal bones on the anterior part. Pubic arch is important because it will show the difference between the female pelvis and the male pelvis. Female pelvis is going to have a wide pubic arch because this is the outlet of the head of the baby. So in a female pelvis, the pubic arch is gonna be wide, gonna be an obtuse angle, more than 90 degrees. Compared to in males, it's gonna be narrow, it's gonna be an acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees. All right, so again, again, what do we call here this anterior joint that attaches the two coxal bones anteriorly? This is my pubic symphysis, pubic symphysis. Posteriorly, the two coxal bones are articulating with the sacrum, forming the ideal sacral joint and 
some textbooks like yours will say sacroiliac joint sacroiliac joints those are the joints between the sacrum and the two coxal bones on the side the coxal bone or the hip bone is formed of three fused bones first bone on here it's going to be my ilium or iliac bone this is my ilium the yellow one all this yellow one is my ilium if we look at on here the bones that you are sitting on right now is called the ischium or ischial bone ischium or ischial bone and the anterior bone here the anterior part of the coxal bone this is called the pubis or the pubic bone so again again three fused bones that will share in the formation of the hip bone or the coxal bone first one is my ilium next one is my ischium and the third one is my pubis or pubic bone If you notice on here, the three bones are going to be fused. In a socket, what do we call this socket on here? This is my acetabulum. The acetabulum is this cavity where the head of the femur is going to be articulating and also is going to be the site for the fusion between the three bones forming my coxal bone so again again what are the three bones here forming the coxal bone what do we call this first one ilium ilium how about this one on here that we're sitting on right now? Ischium or ischial bone. And the third one. And the third one on here. This is going to be my pubis or pubic bone so ilium ischium and pubis again what do we call this cavity where all the three bones going to be fusing and also is going to be serving as the site of the articulation of my head of the femur we call this is my acetabulum 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 so again again we've got ilium ischium and pubis all the three gonna fuse together in this cavity we call this is my acetabulum this is where again the head of the femur gonna be articulated to form the hip joint Let me open a different app because this one is about to crash.
All right, so we're looking on here at the ilium, ischium, and pubis. So I remove here all those ligaments. You see, the acetabulum is the point of articulation of the head of the of the femur that will allow the formation of the hip joint looking on here you can see this large hole this is called my obturator foramen obturator foramen is this hole here that will serve as a pathway for the nerves for the vessels to travel in and out of the pelvic cavity. So this is my obturator foramen, obturator foramen. All right, so we're looking on here at the different parts of the coxal bone. First, we mentioned three bones. Those are my ilium, ischium, and pubis. We call the joint between the two pubic bones. This is my pubic symphysis. Pubic symphysis. If I want to look closer at the ilium, you will see that the ilium has a crest because this is the iliac crest. Iliac crest, you can feel it. You can feel part of it in, the, in your back, in the lower back. This is where the belt that you're using is gonna be held. So you're holding the belt of your pants on the iliac crest. Looking here at important markings that you can see in the ischium. You can see a pointed process on here. This is called my ischial spine. Ischial spine. Above it, I have a large notch. And below it, I have a much smaller notch. Because this large notch is my greater sciatic notch. And the smaller one is going to be my lesser sciatic notch. So again, again, this is going to be my ischial spine. Below it, I have my lesser sciatic notch. And above it here, as part of the iliac bone, I will see this large fossa above the ischial spine. This is my greater sciatic notch, greater sciatic notch. Those are pretty much all the important markings that we need to know. Again, again, a quick review. We have three bones that will share in the formation of the coxal bone. First one is my ilium. Next one is my ischium. 
And the third one is my pubis or pubic bone. The two pubic bones are articulating anteriorly. By a joint, we call this joint here is the pubic symphysis. Three bones are fused together inside this cavity. We call the cavity here is my acetabulum. And the acetabulum is the site of the articulation of the head of the femur, as you see on here. The head of the femur, along with the acetabulum, will form the hip joint. Important markings also will include the large foramen on here that will serve as a site for the vessels and nerves to pass in and out of the pelvic cavity. We call this as my obturator foramen. This is my obturator foramen. This is my obturator form. The two joints that will be located between the sacrum and the iliac bones, those are my sacroiliac joints on both sides of the sacrum on here. Those are my sacroiliac joints. Again, again, a major difference between the male pelvis and the female pelvis is going to be how wide is the pubic arch. So I'm looking here, this is a female pelvis. So I have a wide pubic arch wide pubic arch, it's an opt it has an obtuse angle. If I'm looking here at the male pelvis, you see it's much narrower than the female pelvis. See again, here, this is female, this is a male. Female, male. Female has a wide pubic arch, male has a narrow pubic arch. Questions, questions? Questions? All right, so moving on. To our next bone in the lower limbs this is going to be the femur. If you were looking at the femur on here. What we can see, first thing that you will notice is the head of the femur. Again, what is articulating with the head of the femur? What's articulating with the head of the femur? What do we call the cavity located in the coxal bone where the head of the femur is articulating? It's called the acetabulum. And acetabulum, because it's formed of the three of the fusion of the three bones, ilium, ischium, and pubic bones, it's going to be a weaker point compared to the rest of the pelvic bones. That's why it's a common site for pelvic fracture. So if a person was driving and hits a tree, for example, what's going to happen? The head of the femur moves backward 
and causes a fracture of the acetabulum. a common site for fractures in car accidents. What's located below any head? Remember, gut and neck. And the neck in here is going to have an angle. And this makes it more susceptible to break, especially in case of osteoporosis. If a person has osteoporosis, one of the most common sites for bone fractures is going to be the neck of the femur, simply because it holds all the body weight down and it's not moving straight. It's going to be taking an angle like this, as you see. So first here, this is going to be my head of the femur. Next is going to be the neck of the femur. And if you notice on here, we can see a large bony eminence on the opposing side to the head of the femur. We call this is my greater trochanter. greater trochanter and if I'm looking here at the posterior aspect and the medial aspect of the proximal end. I will see another smaller bony eminence. This is going to be my lesser trochanter. So again, again, what do we call the large bony eminence on here? This is my greater trochanter, the smaller one is my lesser trochanter. You can see only from an interior view the greater trochanter and a very small part of the lesser trochanter. In order to see the whole lesser trochanter, you need to look at the posterior aspect of the bone for you to see the lesser trochanter on here. So again, again, in the proximal end of the femur, what do we need to identify we need to identify the head of the femur neck of the femur greater trochanter and lesser trochanter Moving down to the lower end of the femur, the distal end on here, I will see two elliptic shaped articular surfaces that will serve as a site for articulation with the tibia to form the knee joint. Do you remember what do we call those elliptic shaped articular surfaces? that we've seen over and over in the skeleton. We call them condyles. So you've got two condyles on here. We got a medial condyle and a lateral condyle. How would I know which one is which? Look here at this side, you'll see that this condyle, it's on the same side as the head of the femur. So is this going to be medial or lateral? What do you think? If I'm on the same side as the femur, is the, uh, as the head of the femur, is the head of the femur directed towards the midline or away from the midline? Is it bulging out of you 
or is it directed towards the pelvis, towards the midline? It's medial. So what do we call, what do you think we're gonna call this here? This is my medial condyle. Medial condyle. How about the other one? The one on the opposing side. The opposing side to the head of the femur. Is this lateral or medial again? It's lateral because the head is medial, so the opposing side is going to be a lateral side. So this is going to be my lateral condyle. Lateral condyle. If I told you here, you've got bony eminences. We've got bony eminences above the condyle. So above the condyle is epicondyle. So here I'm on the same side as the head of the femur. So what do you think we're gonna call this epicondyle? The bony eminence above the condyle. What do you think we're gonna call this here? The bony eminence above the condyle is my medial epicondyle. And the bony eminence above the condyle on the lateral side, it's on the opposite side to the head of the femur. This is going to be my lateral epicondyle. So again, again, what we're looking at in here, we're looking at the important markings of the femur, the bone of the thigh. So we call this here the head of the femur, neck of the femur. Greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. If we go down, we'll see medial condyle, lateral condyle, medial epicondyle, and lateral epicondyle. We've got a notch, a depression here between the medial and lateral condyles. This notch on here, it's between the condyle. So we're gonna call it intercondylar notch. This surface, this smooth surface on the anterior aspect of the lower end of the femur, this is where the patella, the kneecap is gonna be articulated. So we call this surface here, this is my patellar surface. This is the patellar surface. So let's look on here. All right, so please complete this exercise as part of your in-class activity for today. I believe the last question was question number seven, right? Last question that you got is question number seven. This is an interior view of the femur. And here, this is an interior view of the humerus.
All right, so please complete this as part of your in-class activity for today. Give you a few minutes to complete it on your own, and then I will answer this with you. We have an important announcement as well. All right, so let me answer this with you on here. So what you, have you got for eight? What is this rounded structure of the femur? Head. And you remember here, the junction of the head to the rest of the proximal end of the femur. What do we call this is my number nine, neck. And what did we call this large bony eminence on the opposing side to the head? It's my greater trochanter. How about the smaller one? If you see part of it in the anterior view and most of it in the posterior view of the femur. What do you call this one? My lesser trochanter. And if we go here to number Well, on here, this is a bony eminence above. This is a bony eminence above the condyle on the lateral side. So, what do we call this on here? What do we call this on here? Above the condyle, my lateral epi. How about the articular surface itself on the lateral side? What do you call this? What do you call the articular surface itself? Number 13. It's my lateral condyle. about 14, the articular surface on the medial side, on the same side as the head. So this is gonna be my medial condyle. And what do we call the bony eminence above the medial condyle? Medial epicondyle. And what do we call this smooth surface? Where is the patella going to be articulating? This is my patellar surface. All right, many of you get confused between the femur and the humerus. I'm not sure why. But that's why I put them next to one another. 
So what do we call 17 here? Is this rounded structure of the humerus? What do we call this rounded structure in the humerus? This is my. head, right? And can you remind me what was it articulating with? What was it articulating with? It was articulating, if you remember. With the head here, the head of the, of the humerus is articulating with the glenoid cavity of the scap glenoid cavity of the scap. All right, so what do we call number 18 on here? Is this ridge? This ridge around the head. What do we call this ridge on here? It's my any idea? Anatomical neck. Anatomical neck. Remember, we've got another one on here. This is the surgical neck. What do we call this large bony eminence on the opposing side? This is what people get confused. This is my greater tubercle and how about the smaller one on here on the anterior surface this is my lesser tubercle so people get confused between greater trochanter lesser trochanter and greater tubercle lesser tubercle All right, so moving down here, what do we call this rounded articular surface that looks like a head in the lower end of the humerus? What did we call this rounded part on here? Capitulum. And what do we call this cylindrical shaped part, number 22? It's my trochlea. And you see on here, what do we call the bony eminence above the trochlea? It's on the same side as the head of the humerus, you see? On the same side as the head of the humerus. What do we call this one? Above an articular surface, what do we call it? Above epi condyle, and I am on the same side as the head of the humerus. This is gonna be my medial epicondyle. See, here I have medial and lateral epicondyles, but I don't have medial and lateral condyles. For the femur, I have medial and lateral condyles and epicondyles. Any difficulty? Any difficulty? So again, again, important articulations here. Head of the femur is articulating with what? Is articulating with the acetabulum. The medial and lateral condyles of the femur are articulating with the tibia. Trochlea is articulating with the ulna. Capitulum is articulating with the radius. Remember, head of the radius. And the trochlea is articulating with the trochlear notch of the ulna.
what is the head of the humerus is articulating with is articulating with the glenoid cavity of the scap 